Look at this guy right here. Handsome guy. His name was Preston. He's one of our students. And Preston just made a $570,000 instant profit on one commercial deal. Here's what he did. He purchased a 172 unit self storage facility in his hometown. The purchase price was $530,000. The appraisal two months before he purchased it came in at $1.1 million, giving him an instant profit day one without doing any work, just closing on the property of $570,000. I have the appraisal right here. It says the final as his value opinion, $1,183,000. Congratulations, Preston. But guess what, everyone? It gets even better. Okay, let's discuss the financing, how the financing work on this deal. Preston used no banks. He did not have to call the bank. Instead, he used our seller financing methods that we teach our students. Here are the terms, okay? Uh, the down payment was $100,000. The balance of $430,000 was paid over the 6.37%, and here's a three-year balloon. But get this, a year one, there are no payments. No payments, no mortgage payments, no payments to the seller for the first 12 months. And years two and three, he's only making interest-only payments. Incredible, right? Incredible. Guess what? It gets even better. We had uh, Preston perform, and it wasn't cheap, a feasibility study, which is basically a, a national company coming out to your facility meeting with you, looking at all the competition and putting together an 80 page report on how to optimize what you currently have. A picture of, an overhead picture of his property will appear right here, you can see it, okay? Now the, the feasibility study is look at the entire area and they're gonna put a report together and show Preston how to optimize this property based upon their 20 years experience. Here's the results. They have an after repair value of $5.85 million. I have a copy of that page. Uh, this feasibility company gives Preston a value of $5,852,000. Does this sound too good to be true? Does it? Watch this video and you'll see exactly what Preston did. And then when we come back, I will share with you how to put yourself in Preston's shoes and do exactly what he did. During this video, if you have any questions, uh, text me to 833-942-4516 and I'll answer your questions. Let's go check out the video. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I have a special guest here today. He's a special man and his name is Preston and uh, he is an awesome guy. He's, he's already a real estate investor. He just took it up a notch uh, with his commercial real estate investing, and he's going to share his story today. So thank you for joining us, Preston. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, you are so welcome. All right, let's start off with this. So Preston, share, share with us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I've always kind of been an entrepreneur and kind of a go-getter, and I started getting into residential real estate and then started... Uh, transferring over into commercial real estate and have just love what it can do for you. Just the residual income and commercial real estate. I love being able to get into some properties that I can force the appreciation uh, by raising the NOI. Yeah, it's just, it's been fun. So far. Okay, great, great. I've known you for years as a, uh, as one of our, one of our, one of our students and, uh, during the uh, the time of you and I coaching back and forth, you you you're also a cancer survivor. Yeah, I am. Uh, actually, at the beginning of 2020, I was actually in pretty good shape, working out uh, religiously, and ended up uh, actually kind of straining my shoulder, and uh, also had a bump that up a lump on my neck that I found, mm. and just thought it was tied to that injury, and the injury went away, and this bump kept on getting bigger, and but I felt great. Uh, I ended up going in to the doctor and finding out that I had late stage three cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Wow. Uh, medi all medically induced from taking a certain uh, medicine. 
But yeah, that was the beginning of 2020. Found that out, so I fought that all 2020. And yeah, I've been in remission though for years now. And great. And here you are, full head of hair, healthy, four kids, and uh, and close on this one deal here. Let's jump on to into this deal. So sure. so big picture, uh, you know, self storage, 172 units. You bought it for 570. You performed a uh, an appraisal and an appraisal as is came in at one point one million dollars. So you're walking into all this equity. So give us the story on on this deal. Yeah, um, I bought it for one or for five thirty uh, actually, but five seventy is yeah the instant walk away. You know, yeah, walk away with yeah, that's right. Backwards. So uh, yeah, yeah, I was out in uh, at a restaurant actually talking to a relative of mine about potentially looking at the a piece of land to develop some uh, storage units. He just threw it out there. A uh, lady overheard me talking about it, and she said, "Yeah, buy my." My grandma's and so I got her number and uh yeah basically just I got in touch with the the grandma and it was like pulling teeth getting uh, information that I wanted but I was patient which is somebody which is what they were looking for so I yeah so uh Preston can we stop right there for a second so how you found this deal is you were sitting at a restaurant talking shop uh, with another person one person next to you overheard that you were in real estate and said hey you should buy my buy my grandma's property yeah, yeah, it was actually, <laughs> yeah, the server at the restaurant. Yeah, wow. Well, that's how it all happened. Yeah. Wow, wow, and the rest is history. Okay, okay, great. So please continue uh, more about the park and how you put together the deal. Yeah, like I said, it was it was like pulling teeth, getting any information out of them. Uh, hardly any records. So I basically had to do some digging, hunt, hunt down yeah. all the information myself as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the process, you and I going back and forth and just over the months, right? Just gathering information little by little by little until we got to the point where we're okay, let's make an offer. So the offer eventually became five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And um and it was seller financing. So um and it was seller financing because basically there are no numbers and lack of income, right? Basically, yeah. that's the reason why. Share with us what what were the terms on the seller financing? Yeah, so basically, uh, purchase price for five hundred thirty thousand, no payments for the first twelve months, and then just interest only only payments for the second year, and then the third year there was going to be a balloon at the end of the third year, so interest only for the second and third year. Okay, and uh, how long is this seller financing good for? For three years. Okay. All right. So first year, no payments. Second year, interest only payments. And then at the end of the third year, it's time to pay her the remaining balance. Yeah. Which is the best uh, solution that we could come up with because going to a bank with the, with no numbers and no information, you know, is going to be tough to get uh, financing. So sure. yeah, getting creative with these sellers, that was key to it. And uh, share with us, what do you like about the deal? What do you like about it? What's the upside? The upside, uh, so there's plans are to develop more storage units. So I think we'll end up having uh, 172 right now, and we're going to be adding another 80 potential that could fit on this property with mm -hmm. some of the spaces. So it was a, uh, originally it was a trailer, or uh, mobile home park, and then the city rezoned it. And so as mobile homes started moving out they were the ones that were there were grandfathered in but once they moved out then they were they had to uh like we couldn't they couldn't have any others move in so over the years they started building these storage units as trailers started moving out and, uh so there's a three more mo uh, mobile homes that are still left that will be getting out of leaving here soon uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll have some vacant land that for developing but the upsides also you know there it was low uh occupancy so getting the units rented out these sellers were old school with everything that they did so and there's no online presence whatsoever so all they had is a sign they're probably in the yellow books and there's also the ones that are, are rented out all the rents can be raised for sure so yeah, there's a lot of upside to it, really. 
Sure. Uh, rent raises, uh, expansion. Virtually, when originally uh, I looked online, when I got the address, virtually no web presence. Virtually, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, so a lot of, lot of upside. Now, one thing that uh, we, we, we told you to do is to get a feasibility study where they will come to your property, meet with you, and they will scan all the competition and they would actually tell you what you should build and what you should not build, right? And that's called a feasibility study. And you did that. It's not cheap, but it was very crucial in determining and assuring what you have, right? So talk to us a little bit about the, about uh, that whole process, the feasibility study. Yeah, you know, it was definitely well worth it. I mean, it took me a few weeks to finally pull the trigger on it, but at first, because I thought this is information I could probably find, but they... They ended, it was 90 some page report that had about any kind of statistic or any kind of data that you would want. Uh, and yeah, just made it so much easier. Uh, and as far as my comfortability level goes with moving forward with any kind of development, uh, future developments, uh, and the just the, the, with the existing buildings that are there, the units that are there, just finding out what the demand is. And one thing that the feasibility report mentioned is the addition of flex space, because when they scanned the market, there was a need for flex space. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That, that's uh, part of it. Uh, the plan, the expansion plan is to add some more, flex, or some flex space as well. Sure, but, sure. And also too, in terms of expansion, there's also a neighboring uh, uh, land there that doesn't belong to you that you may purchase and build upon. So talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah. So um, when we did the, had the title search done um, before closing, a uh, lane popped up that the sellers were unaware of, and it was just an existing agreement between this, uh, this owner of the, the neighboring property, just a simple little utility uh, easement that uh, lien that he put on the property. And so, I went and met with him to start trying to get that cleared off. And and one thing led to the next, we kind of hit it off. And uh, he has some uh, vacant space behind his property yeah. and, and next to mine. And I started talking to him about potentially buying that. And, uh, so yeah, that's looking pretty good. It'll be, it'll be great. Yeah. And also adds access from the back side of this property. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Air traffic road anyway. So. Yeah. The sky's the limit with this property, and all started with a someone eavesdropping in your conversation at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like they're being nosy. <laughs> all right. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> uh, let's let's exclude the uh, the potential land purchase. So you bought it for five thirty. Uh, there's a there's an as is appraisal that you performed before the purchase that came in at one point one million. Now, uh, that's as is. That's what it's worth today, right? So you're walking in with uh, half a million dollars in equity. Once you do all of your expansion, raise your rents, what are we talking uh, an after repair value of, of about what? So um, it, with the expansion plans that this uh, lady that I had the feasibility study done mm -hmm. from, uh, it's looking at close to $6 million is what it'll eventually be worth. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Of course, that's going to take a few years and a lot of work. But man, I always tell our students out there, one deal sometimes can really just change everything. But you know what? It all wasn't roses. We we had uh, some struggles in between working on this deal. You and I, we had uh, a, a bunch of phone calls. Share with us uh, maybe uh, the most difficult part of this deal and how you overcame it. Yeah. The most difficult part was well finding get gathering information from the sellers. Uh, you know, with this being my first self storage facility, I wasn't one hundred percent certain. That, you know, what numbers I could be looking at, and they the sellers didn't even have that information. So that was the biggest. That was one big challenge. But yeah, just having patience with them though, and working with them. And I, I know I, in the beginning there was somebody, another investor that had already contacted them and interested in buying it. They even gave him a price, and he was impatient though. He didn't have, and they were turned off by that. So I just was easier to work with, and yeah, I ended up creating the deal. Awesome. Um, well, um, 
you know, the work continues on this property. You and I will continually meet on this. For the for our audience out here, give us one or two tips of how they could do exactly what you did. So give them some advice or inspiration to jump in and do what you did. What would you say to them? You know, I've, I've always been kind of a student on uh, self-help books and uh and I and have always seeked advice from other people that have been there and done that. And I've always heard from a lot of these guys that I've studied forever uh, that, you know, if you want to learn how to do something or learn, learn a specific field or whatever it may be, uh, learn from ideally find somebody that would be a good men mentor that yeah, could show you the ropes. That's huge. And I would say the other thing, too, that you and I constantly talk about is, is um, the other bit of advice to get in. Uh, the best way is to do something off market, right? Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. I've I've tried the on market. It's just tough. It's a lot easier going directly to the seller, and uh, you know, there's typically no competition. All right. Okay, uh, Preston. Thanks a lot. I, I appreciate your time. I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Now you're you're a busy guy. Uh, to to go from five hundred and thirty thousand to six million dollars is gonna take some time. Yeah, it'll take a little while, but yeah, before I feel comfortable with it, though. Uh, yeah. you, you know, this this commercial business, um, for majority of our students, this is the largest financial transaction that they've done in their lives up to this point, right? And you cannot fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah. All of your decisions have to be data-based and or from, uh, from a mentor, someone who's been there or done that to tell you what to do. And... Um, uh, that's how you, you know, get to where you are, right? And and about to be making good decisions based on solid information. And that's what commercial is, solid information. Yeah, yeah. Doing your due diligence. You know, I, I think, I don't know how typical it is, but I can only imagine with entrepreneurs, uh, the entrepreneur type, you know, there's too many shiny objects out there. You're just, it's easy yeah. to, to get distracted and onto the next new shiny object. And, <laughs> That's another thing that's been huge with you all, uh, being able to keep me grounded, keep me uh, focused on one thing and, and seeing it through. All right. Awesome. Well, again, uh, Preston, thank you so much for joining us today. This is very inspiring and we really appreciate you. Well, appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Welcome back. Let's do a quick review. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, text me. If any questions, what Preston pulled off. All right, the text uh, number will appear right on the screen. Now, what I wanna do here is a, is a quick summary, but before I do that, go ahead and just in comments, leave Preston a quick note of encouragement. Tell him congratulations, tell him how inspiring he is. All right, okay, let's get started. Now, I'm gonna start off with Preston because today's video is about Preston. Preston, cancer survivor, husband, father, real estate investor. I bring it up first because Preston's a real guy, awesome guy. And if he did it, so can you. All right, let's continue. How he found a deal is so important. If you recall, Preston and his friend were sitting in a restaurant. Someone tapped Preston on the shoulder, overheard him, was eavesdropping about his excitement for commercial real estate and said, hey, my grandma has a property for sale. Are you interested? And of course, uh, he closed on it, right? So my, my lesson here is you better know how to act upon these types of opportunities. I imagine some of you are sitting on the same opportunities that you heard of, but you don't know what to do with them, okay? Those can be the diamonds in the rough, okay? All right, next, let's talk about the self-storage business life cycle. Real quick here, the self-storage business does have a life cycle. It's in three phases. The first phase is the development phase. The second phase is the expansion and operational phase. And the third phase is what we call the maturation phase or, the, or when the property matures and is operational and functional and stabilized. Preston is, in, is on phase one at the moment, okay? At the moment. So we have a lot of work ahead of us to achieve everything that we want to do here based upon what was um, recommended to him in the feasibility study report. We're going to go over the highlights here. This report is worth its weight in gold, okay? What it recommends that Preston does is to add on the property itself an additional 4,500 square feet of non-climate controlled units plus 13,000 square feet, 13,000 square feet of flex space. Now, the, the 
feasibility reported that there was no flex space within a 20 mile range and there was a huge demand for it, okay? And it also reported that if, if uh, Preston could invest in the property and do the, uh, the non-climate control and the flex space, he would produce a 165% uh, percent return on investment when the money spent to do this. Incredible, right? Only with commercial real estate, all right? The average occupancy for storage in that market is 90%, okay? That's something you need to know. It's very telling. It tells us that it's a thriving market and it has room to absorb more units, okay? More units like this and like this. Very important to know, okay? All self-storage facilities are not created equal just because of the location and the makeup of the storage units, okay? Very important. Now, a couple of smaller things is they recommend that he install uh, storage software. Can you believe that the past owner had no uh, software to maximize the operations? So in this case, we're going to use a software called StoreEdge. It's powerful. Check it out. And lastly, uh, we're going to have to establish an online presence okay, for the property. When you Google the property, you Google the address, virtually nothing pops up. And that's not good, okay? So if we expect to uh, absorb, uh, to create uh, this new space, as well as the other uh, 172 units of space to be rented out, we need to have uh, a strong marketing presence. So we have, in fact, that work has already begun, all right? That is so important. In this case, it, it was non-existent. Got it? All right, so there you go. This is Preston's story. Are you inspired? I am. I love working with Preston. All right, now, if you're interested in seeing what we do for our students, you can go ahead and apply to be one of our mentees. This, the uh, link will appear on the screen. Or if you just want to read and uh, learn and get educated, there's a, a, a book link for my uh, commercial estate for beginners. You can just download it and, and get at it. All right, also, do me a favor. Go ahead and like this video. And if you want to see more like this, go ahead and click subscribe uh, for, uh, to, to get more videos like this from our channel. Thank you so much, everyone. And again, if you have any questions, go ahead and text me. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next video.